Before we get into our next video in the Palette Project series, where we take the palettes that we tore apart in the last video and turn at least part of that wood into a outdoor planter, following Matthew Peach's low cost, high profit items, this material being free, just the labor to get it usable. I'd like to real quick say thank you to everyone who entered the first 250 giveaway. The winner was chosen at random has been contacted. A gift of $25 was made in their name to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, as well as getting them their gift. So thank you, Don. I appreciate it and congratulations. I'd like to do this again at 500 subscribers. This was $25 for 250 subscribers. That'll be $50 for 500 subscribers. If you win once, it doesn't mean you can't win again. So Make sure you hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for future videos where I'll be letting you know where we're at on that. But with that out of the way, thank you to all subscribers. And now we'll move on to the video. Thank you. Now here's where I'm going to take each of the slats and look for the, the nail holes and then any imperfection that I don't want that's close to the nail holes i'll be cutting those off this is not to get it to a final length it's just basically a rough cut getting it down to what i'm going to be able to use now there are times see that one right there cut a split out there are times that your boards won't have straight sides as a matter of fact there may be a lot of times where they don't you put the straightest one up against the fence and uh, cut the nail holes off out. Just move down the board. I'm not going to show all of them, but that's the process that I'm using to get the most wood I can out of it. And these off cuts will be used or can be used later, either in this project or in another one. So now with all these cut, all of our slats, you may be wondering if I'm just going to cut the ends off, why not do it while it's on the pallet? One reason is that's a good clean cut. If I did it with a circular saw or any other kind of saw, really, while it was still on the pallet, I'd have to go back and clean it up anyway. Another reason, there are times when I don't mind the nail holes. I'll either use it for aesthetics or I can fill them in, sand them and move on. But one of the biggest reasons is I find it a lot easier to get nails out of the slats than I do the supports because these nails go quite a ways down in here. It can be quite a chore to get those done, but I've got the slats cut. This is maximum getting rid of all the nails and, and the split pieces, such as this right here. So this is all usable. Some of it does have a little cup to it. Some of it's pretty good. In dealing with this, I'll be cutting it, ripping it down the middle somewhere to, you know, for my different pieces. And that'll take some of the effect of that cup out. But I do still have my one by fives, but as I said, I'll be cutting those down to treat them more like one by fours. So I'm going to take my cut list and I'm just going to start at the top leg a one three quarters by 14. All of these, let's see my shortest ones are down here at the bottom and they're 15 and a half. They go up to 19. They're 17 and a quarter. So I've got plenty of length. One and three quarters by 14. One, two, three, four, 
I give those four out of that. One and three eighths by 14, two, three, four. So there are my long and my short legs or the wood that I can use to make it. Now, what I could do is that's three and three quarters wide, three and five eighths, three and five eighths. What I could do, and I may end up doing this, we'll check back in when I get it done. I may take one of these and get the one and three quarter leg A and the one and three eighths leg B if I can get the, the right dimensions off of it. But I am going to try and keep the outside with the saw marks. I think that that'll just add a little to the rustic nature of it. But I'll check back in when I get these cut and we'll move on to our cross boards. All right, now with our side pieces cut and on the plans, this is actually labeled back wall, middle wall. That's what all these pieces are. Like I said, we're going to have two of the wide pieces. And then two narrow pieces. With a kind of middle piece in there. And that will get us our 12 inches. So, now we're actually to the point where this is your cut list, again, with this one change for everything except the X's. So you've got your two legs, you've got your A's. This is crossboard A for the first leg. The difference being, I will have these two up flush here instead of one and three eighths down here. This will only be one and a quarter because as I've cut these, they'll be flush on the top here and on the bottom. I'll still have the inset, but since pallet wood gave me longer pieces, I'm not restricted to the, the length there. Uh, it just make it a little easier for me. If you're dealing with fence pickets, obviously you can only do so much with the length, but especially when you're having to do four sides, but I'm going to be going top to bottom on this make the top and bottom flush. Okay, when I was laying out my side pieces, I realized I did not make sure they were 12 inches. I made sure they were at least 12 inches. So I did run through some of the larger pieces, the ones on the outside, to get them all to 12 inches exactly. And what I've decided to do is, before I put anything together, I'm going to sand the outside of the side panels just so I don't have to worry about it when it gets all put together. I'm not going to do a lot of sanding, but I'm going to do enough so that we'll just skip to the end. All right, what I've done, I've taken my framing square, set it up on the edge of my assembly table, and I've just used tape and uh, super glue, CA glue, and I've put a sideboard for me to bump that left side up to, I'm going to bump, this is the top, so I'll push that down there. This will be up at the top and this will be over on the right. But what this lets me do, since I put, since I put this second piece on top, I can just rest it down. Like that, that'll get my bottom. I put a line here where I want them, these boards to rest. That splits the difference. 
in this one will just be flush with the top. That's made this part of the assembly a little easier, but it's the same as what was shown in Matthew Peach's video without the, the template for drilling. So I'm going to go ahead and do all my sides, and we'll check back in when I'm done with that. And here are two of the pieces uh, just showing that I do have the screws in it. The sideboards go from top to bottom. All these holes were pre-drilled, countersunk before the screw was driven in, but the full build is, is over on Matthew Peach's video. This is just showing the different boards that I'm using. And here are all four of the sides put together. This is the outside view of them, the same as what Matthew Peach has, only like I said, I'm not putting the X's in. Another difference in this build is before I put the planter together, I'm putting these cutoff pieces from those wider boards where I trimmed it down to 12 inches exactly. I took a little off of a few of them. I'm putting three screws to hold these down at the bottom, which is going to hold the slats that I'm going to put inside the planter. This is actually going to have full slats across the entire bottom, then plastic, and then dirt through the whole thing. And here's the planter assembled, identical to the way Matthew Peach did his. And again, drill, countersink, screws on the outside boards. That would be the A pieces. All right, now that we've got our planter box put together, the only thing left for us to do is cut the 45s on our trim pieces that go on the top. Install those. We'll be about done. I am using my miter gauge, which is already set to 45 degrees. So we'll just cut the tips off of these. Looks like it'll work out pretty good. And there we have it. Same basic planner as in Matthew Peach's video, which again, I'll link right here so you can see. I did not do the crosses simply because when I started this, I was asked to make one without it. But other than that, I did also put the supports in because I'm not going to be doing three boards across. I'm going to be putting more slats across to make a, a base. I'm not going to bother screwing them in, just set them down there. I'm going to line the whole thing with plastic and fill it all with dirt. But there we go. And we still have wood left over. I haven't touched the supports, and I've got all the offcuts from making this. We'll see what we can do for an inside project. And that one will probably be using the joiner at least. But this was all table saw, sander, drill, driver. Uh, if you're wondering if this is the way it's going to stay, this will probably be hit with a uh, flat disc on a grinder just to smooth off a little bit. It's going to be painted. So 
I'm not quite sure what they're going to want to put here, but I was asked to leave it off, so I'm leaving it off. There we go. Till next time. And here we have it sitting outside. And if you're wondering why it looked kind of jumpy in there in the middle, it's because I was asked to make two of them. So although I have separate areas to make them, use completely different pallet wood, I do only have one saw and one area that I can really record this on. So I did have to keep jumping back and forth. But when you have an opportunity to sell two, you make two. And that's where we'll end this. Until next time.